This is your moment of clarity from LeeCamp.net. We should have known 2011 would be a fucking bizarre year. On the first day, 5,000 blackbirds fell out of the sky dead. That's always a good sign, right? Turns out it was worse than we thought. Those blackbirds were the Lord's way of warning us about Rebecca Black. And speaking of Rebecca Black, 2011 was a year of finding out we can't control the monsters we create. Momar Gaddafi, Hosni Mubarak, Charlie Sheen, and the semi-automatic used to shoot Gabby Giffords. All all created by us and all ultimately responsible for so much death and destruction. This was also the year that Twitter grew out of its training bra and flashed its new powerful tits at the world, helping to bring about revolutions across the planet. We saw the Arab Spring, well, some of us saw it, the rest of us were busy retweeting images of Anthony Weiner's junk. Many of the Arab countries rioted for their human rights. Riots also broke out in London for television sets, in the U.S. Walmarts for waffle irons and basketball shoes, and at Penn State in order to protect a child rapist. Who says we don't have our priorities straight? Speaking of Twitter, even the Pope finally got on board. His first tweet, of course, being, I'm the Pope, hashtag winning. His second tweet was, I love all my children, hashtag no homo. But the Pope couldn't stop the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, which ended despite many people still believing that it's okay for the military to allow the occasional neo-Nazis in without hesitation, while forbidding a love preference because it was a no-no in a book written 2,000 years ago in a time when doing the I got your nose trick was considered witchcraft. This past year, the 9-11 memorial was unveiled, a mere nine years too late, and the Martin Luther King Jr. monument was unveiled, a mere 40 years too late, proving that even in death, Martin Luther King Jr. had to stand at the back of the line. But more important than Martin Luther King was the fact that Prince William and Kate something got married, or had a baby, or died, or something grand, and Kate apparently wore a large hat at some point. Hooray! Also in the United Kingdom, we saw the the News Corp hacking scandal break wide open, during which everyone was aghast to learn that Rupert Murdoch, one of the most successful businessmen in the world, has evidently never spoken to anyone who fucking works for him. Never once. It's the damnedest thing. But luckily, some truth did come out in 2011, thanks to Julian Assange. WikiLeaks proved that the truth is far scarier to the various governments of the world than anything else. To governments, truth is like flaws. A few bites of it is fine, but if you throw a bunch of it at them, they'll accuse you of rape and take away all your money. And in 2011, I also got no better at analogies. Next in the scary to the power elite category, Hacker Anonymous proved you can get a hell of a lot more done in this world if you aren't worried about your hair and your tan. Meanwhile, the GOP candidates for president spent the year worrying about their hair and their tans. Also in the year gone by, after what everyone agrees were Hall of Fame terrorism careers, two terrorist leaders retired from the game that made them household names. We were sad to see them go. They bid farewell in very different ways, though. One was shot through the head, and the other one put out a best-selling book entitled In My Time. Troy Davis became the latest innocent man to be executed, and death penalty advocates celebrated, proving their resolve to stick with an antiquated, flawed, racist system, rain or shine, right or wrong, moral or immoral, and nothing takes more balls than sticking with a point of view no matter how fully you've been proven wrong. My hat is off to you, death penalty advocates. Bradley Manning and Awayway both went to jail for truth. Meanwhile, everyone at Goldman Sachs stayed out of jail thanks to lies. 2011 saw the lowest levels of DUI arrests in nearly 20 years, proving Americans are finally, finally getting better at driving while drunk. Floods tore apart insert your state here, and tornadoes battered insert your state here. Meaning 2011 saw the highest number of climate change deniers ever standing on the roofs of their houses, praying a helicopter will rescue them. 
Despite all of this, 2011 still left on a positive and powerful note. Occupy Wall Street occupied not just the streets, but the minds of millions. Finally, people are standing up against the corporate raping and pillaging of our world. The grotesquely rich and the obscenely powerful can only jail truth and barricade liberty for so long. The Mayans tell us the world ends at the end of 2012. Why? Because another world is possible. So everybody hold on to your seats, because on the big roller coaster, 2011 was the uphill clink, 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 clink part. That's been your Moment of Clarity from LeeCamp.net. If you get a chance, check out the Moment of Clarity podcast. I've had guests like Janine Garofalo, John Oliver from The Daily Show, Greg Pallast, and Chris Hedges. Check it out on iTunes or at LeeCamp.net. Thanks. You believe I believe this is right now, right here Not about us dying in the million years Stop allowing them to build up your fears I don't know about y'all And what you believe I believe this is right now